So Transformers 1 came out in theaters recently, and I went and saw it opening weekend, because I, I saw the trailers, I thought, I was like, hey, this looks good. Never saw a Transformers movie. Always, like, I always heard the negative reputation of the Michael Bay Transformers movies. So, like, when, like, one came out last year, and I was like, I don't want to go see that movie, no. Um, so I, I, you know, I didn't, I was like, okay, you know, it's animated, you know, it's probably gonna be like a whole nother like timeline or whatever. I don't have to have like a whole bunch of, you know, research or whatever to back it up. So I decided to go see Transformers 1 and I really enjoyed it. It was actually really good. So because of that, I decided, I was like, okay, you know what? Even though they have a really, really bad reputation, I'm gonna go watch all the Transformers movies. And I did, all for the first time. So, I've, so uh, I wanted to talk about the whole franchise, um, maybe, maybe talk about a few of the movies in, spe uh, in specific. I'll be honest, I don't remember a whole lot about each of the movies. Um, they are long and they are <gasps> boring. Yeah, let's talk about them in release order, I guess. Yes, because I don't know if what chronological order is. I don't know, but like you have the Michael Bay movies and then you have like other, like you have three other movies and then you have the Michael Bay movies. So the first Transformers, it was kind of all right. Um, you had like, it, the action wasn't like super great or anything. And it's like, and like you didn't even have like a much with, with actual Transformers for like a good chunk of the like first part of the movie, uh, probably like first half of the movie or so. Um, again, these are all like two and a half hour movies. like. They are long. Um, it took me, like, it was, it was tough to get through them because uh, firstly, uh, normally I'd have time for like maybe an hour and a half or two hours long movie. So two and a half hours, two hours and 40 minutes. That definitely was like, okay, that's, that's a tougher sell because uh, just time restraints and everything like that. But, um, but also they're just not all that interesting at all. Like they just, the, the writing's not good the characterizations aren't good. It's all like super shallow and like there's, so like there's not really much to get into. And like when you have like, I don't know, like the action wasn't really that entertaining to me. Yeah, maybe it was like the big cuts or I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I've just watched so many superhero movies or so many other action stuff that, you know, giant robots just don't really be like, oh my gosh, you know, anymore. It's like, okay, yeah, sure, whatever. It's, I mean, I don't really go to watch a lot of action stuff for the action, really. It's like, okay, what story can you tell with the action, right? What, what kind of stuff can you do with it that's more creative, that's more interesting than it just being action? Because if it's just action for action's sake, sure, these fit the bill. It's, it is action, certainly, and it's, it's there and there are cuts and it is really hard to tell. One of the biggest complaints I have about the Transformers movies in total though, just is the, the designs of the characters, there's just so many moving parts that it's hard to actually tell where pieces stop and pieces end. And so they all just look like an amalgam, like they almost look like scrap piles. Like where you just don't really know what like, and I don't know, I don't know what you could really do to, you know, get that like, like close-ups on like Optimus Prime's face or whatever really do help to like kind of be able to distinguish features and whatnot and be able to like uh, um, kind of get a good look at them but a lot of times I feel like you know you just don't see them for very long so you, you don't really get a chance to really get a good look at them and that's actually something I feel like they did better with like Bumblebee for instance which is more of a little bit more of a character study film and it's specific and it's done specifically on Bumblebee. So you get, I feel like you really get a good look at the character himself. And I think that's probably one of the biggest things about the Transformers movies to me is that they are visually interesting. Transformers are a visually interesting thing, but I feel like a lot of times you just don't get to see enough of them or you, you don't really get to get a good enough look where like you know where you, where you can actually kind of look and, and see and see all the intricacies and everything um about them during the movie so it's 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 an unfortunate thing that you have with the movies themselves but um but with, like with the first transformers movie you know i didn't i didn't think the action was all that great you know it was i don't know it was it's hard to tell what's going on entirely and so it's just like whatever the characterizations it's just super bland super basic Nothing in, no, nothing all that great 
nothing really all that interesting, to be honest. Um, and like the first half of the movie doesn't even really have Transformers, and then they have Transformers, and you know, you have like, uh, I don't know, like, uh, I don't some really weird plot. Like the plots themselves are just kind of like overly basic. And then, um, and then you have like, uh, like this one plot point where uh, Sam Witwicky, Wick, Sam Witwicky, uh, has to go home to grab a pair of glasses because they've got a map on them. Sure, okay. Um, and so then, then all the Transformers, they're all like, they're like crowd around, like stomping on the yard. Like I can see that being like, like a kid thing, you know? Like oh, like it's like super basic humor. It's not even like. But I, I just, it was like eye rolling stuff. It was just like, oh my gosh, are we doing this? Like, come on, grow up. Like, <laughs> I guess, you know, maybe, yeah. Like, I mean, there's the argument that it's for kids. Sure, I get it. But like, you can have, you can have more mature and some of the best kids movies aren't this immature. Like you, you can do better. Kids don't have to have trash. Just because it's like, well, it's for kids. It's like, well, yeah, you can serve up better stories to kids, right? But yeah, uh, yeah, aimed at kids, Transformer, yeah. Uh, Revenge of the Fallen is the second one, I think. Uh, that one, I think that was, I think that was probably my favorite out of the, uh, um, out of the Michael Bay Transformers movies. Um, it was, you know, I mean, it had some interesting stuff in it. Um, you had what a uh, uh, moon stuff. They they integrated um, a lot of uh, historical events into Transformers stuff. That's actually a pattern that you see a lot with the Michael Bay Transformers movies. Actually, really, uh, something you see even with Rise of the Beasts in t from last year. Um, you see what you see is is they start off sometime in the past um, with like like some kind of historical thing going on. Transformers are there, and then you go to the present, and it'll link to that past event. Um, and then you have like military involved or whatever. Like it's, it's, it's kind of formulaic and I was like, okay, kind of was seeing that, um, a few times like, oh, interesting. Um, but like having the, um, the prime that was asleep that whole time actually working for Megatron. And then you're like, how does this make any sense? Like, I don't, yeah, like. I don't know. Again, it's like super basic characteristics. Characteristics like like none of these characters have any depth at all. The only the like the only two make like the only like I think four. I think there's only like four Transformers. I actually remember um, Megatron because he's the main bad guy. Uh, Optimus Prime because he's the leader. Bumblebee because he's the guy like he's more or less the main Transformer. Uh, I think Starscream was one. Was he like he, he was like a big tentacle transformer thing, right? Like he, he was like a big monster transformer. What was the one that was an airplane? I can't remember. Yeah, like none of the like like some of them were visually interesting, but you just don't like. There's nothing to remember them about. Like about them, there's nothing like. Like again, you know, it's for kids, I guess, it's to sell toys, but like. There's like, you can do better. You can do better. Like you can create characters that actually have characters. Like they did that with Transformers 1. They did that with Bumblebee. They did that sort of with Rise of the Beasts. They did a better job at it. But like, yeah. Um, Revenge of the Fallen, whatever. No, wait, no, that was dark, sorry. The one, the one with the the prime that was betraying the others, that was dark of the that was dark of the moon. That was the third one. I'm sorry, Revenge of the Fallen was like, I don't know. Dread. It had a. Thing in. No, I think that's the one with, the yeah, the the, the giant transformer tentacle monster. Or something, because it's like buried in the in the ground or whatever, or something like that. Gosh, yeah, the, the, these all blend together to me. Okay, they they all just kind of blend together. Um, Revenge of the Fallen had <sighs> big transformer called the Fallen. 
ancient transformer and he's getting his revenge something like that yeah um then dark of the moon yeah i guess i was talking about dark of the moon so for the most part uh the, the moon stuff and um whatever anyways uh, uh age of extinction that's next on the list actually age, i actually watched age of extinction in the last night uh in reverse order accidentally um i was i mean it's kind of my fault i uh, i i I wrote down the last night and then Age of Extinction, so I accidentally flipped, flipped them. Um, but I didn't even realize that I watched the last, like I didn't even realize that I had skipped one when I watched the last night because they like they, they, they basically recapped like, hey, here's, here's where we are after Dark of the Moon. And now I was like, I was like, okay, this guy, which I was like, okay, this is your character introduction, right? Um, I did find it kind of weird why you had a bunch of Transformers with him already, and then um, why there was a dinosaur with them. I was like, I thought the next movie, Age of Extinction, is where you had the dinosaur, so that's weird. Um, so I did have a couple of questions. And then there was also like, um, like you had Optimus Prime floating in space, and then Megatron was back. Uh, and I was like, wait, Megatron died in Dark of the Moon. And I'm like, I guess you could just kind of like, okay, whatever. Uh, Optimus Prime is in space. But then I watched Age of Extinction and I was like, oh, it's because I missed a movie. That's why. <laughs> so there were, there, there were a few things I was like, I was like, okay. I was like what? Okay, whatever. Because um, they brought Megatron back in Age of Extinction and then they sent him off, or Optimus Prime off, to go find the creator. And then, yeah, you had some other character stuff. All, all these, all the Michael Bay ones, like there just really isn't a lot to say. Like I was just bored throughout a lot of these these movies like there's just there's like transformers i think is an interesting concept like i think when done like when done correctly like it can be really interesting it can be really cool like there, there's there's some stuff in there that that is like i mean because the transformers themselves they look cool like it, it they look cool you know like the whole the whole the whole idea is cool but the like the the action's not all that great. Like like Godzilla movies, the the Hollywood Godzilla movies. Those, like you can, like those are like terrible movies, but like the action is actually pretty fun. Like the kaiju destroying city kind of thing. Like you have like um, like the Godzilla and Kong New Empire, and then Godzilla versus Kong. Those were pretty. Like those had some pretty fun action sequences that was like that was entertaining to watch i i like the those hollywood godzilla movies more than tran than the michael bay transformers movies because like you could see what was going on those like that was cool that was fun the 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 actual story was way worse the the, the stories in these are like serviceable enough like if you were like half paying attention to the movie like you had it in the background while you were doing something you like you would be you'd be forgiven for thinking there was an actual plot and like actually like actual characters and everything like that it's it's serviceable enough so that when you like like if, if you're like not really paying attention like you'd be like oh yeah yeah there's yeah because because it's it has the it has like the bare bones of what you need for a story and that's about it like that's that's kind of what you they like there's there's nothing extra there it's just like the bare bones of like the actual story and that's kind of what all you get like for like story and characters you just get like the very basics so if you're like i mean granted i guess if if you're if you're someone who watches movies for like the story and everything like that like me or if you just like i mean kids will love it cuz like pff, they're not going to they're not going to really be able to you know like they they're not going to be able to tell the difference um, not until they actually, you know, start thinking about the movies more and actually start analyzing and like, oh, wait, yeah, th maybe this isn't actually, you know, like, I mean, so like kids, teenagers, younger teenagers, they're, they're going to be able to see these, they're going to watch these movies, they're going to have fun with it because, sure, it, it, like it's serviceable enough, but like it could be, it could be better, it could be better, but um, anyways, going on to Bumblebee. I actually, I did like Bumblebee. Uh, watched Bumblebee, and I was like, hey, this is actually pretty good. You know, it's the origin story of Bumblebee. I don't know if these are, if uh, Bumblebee and uh, Rise of the Beasts, I don't know if they're supposed to be in the same timeline, just prequels to uh, the Michael Bay movies. I don't know. 
Um, it, to me, feels a little bit more like a reboot because the, the designs of the characters are a little bit different. Um, and also, you're, they're actually like starting to, because like Bumblebee like is basically like an origin, it's an origin story of Bumblebee. And it actually brings in like, like before any of these guys are on Earth. Like that's like it's it, it is kind of like the beginning of all of this. Um, I mean, like he, uh, like you, you get him, like you get his voice. Cybertron, they they show Cybertron. That was cool. I liked seeing Cybertron. That was that was great. You know, seeing seeing the war, seeing some of the last days of the war. Um, Bubble going to Earth. He has his mission. Him learning to talk using the radio. That's cool. Losing his voice, seeing why he would, why he lost his voice, that is all cool, um, and the, and it does have a much more personal story attached to it, which actually makes it a better movie. Um, and then you have Rise of the Beasts as well. And Rise of the Beasts, um, I thought that I thought it was, it's still like all right. You know, it's not like anything amazing. It's like okay, yeah, yeah, that's just, it's better than the Michael Bay movies. I can say that. It's good enough. It's good. You know, it's it's decent enough. It's it's not terrible. It's, you know, it, it does a better job, but, like, still not amazing. Um, I don't know really what to ask from a live-action Transformers movie, but they're starting to get there. They could probably do better, but they're starting to get there. Um, and then, of course, Transformers 1, which is a, it's a story between... Of, of um, Optimus Prime and Megatron, and them as brothers going on this adventure, and then eventually Megatron turning against them and starting the war uh, of Cybertron. And I would love to see more of these animated movies that are telling like the backstory before you get to the humans. Um, I'd love to see more of that, uh, more on the war, more of these stories, because. Again, like Transformers One, that had a much more personal story because the tra for the I guess really for the first time, the main characters are the Transformers because they've always stayed in the background. Like, that's kind of the problem with like like the Godzilla and King Kong movies, the Hollywood ones, the ones from like 2014 on. Um, those have all like like you had these you have these monsters who aren't really characters. And they're just kind of background stuff. And then you have to tell a story with all the humans. But nobody cares about the human stuff. They just want to see the monster action. So, like, it's like, what's, like... But then also, you're using the monsters as, like, as characters because they're the heroes, even though they're supposed to be monsters, right? They're supposed to be the bad guys, but then they're using them as the good guys. And then that just doesn't, like, like all of the logic is, like, starts breaking apart as, as none of this stuff really fits together. But then with like Transformers, you have actual characters. Like the Transformers themselves are actual characters. Why can't we just get a movie about Transformers on Earth that is taking place from the perspective of the Transformers? How about that? How about we do that? Like, let's stop telling human stories with Transformers in them and we start telling stories of Transformers in the human world. We could do that. or. Ditch, ditch Earth altogether. I mean, we could stay with Earth, with because um, then you could shoot stuff in live action. Um, but we, let's let's like Transformers One had actual like the the it focused on the Transformers themselves and their characters, because like all you ever got from the Michael Bay movies um, was a line of like Optimus or Megatron saying we were brothers once, and that's it. That's all the backstory you get of their relationship was one line, maybe twice in five movies, six, seven movies. Sure, um, if you want to count all, all of them. Uh, but like out of the seven live action movies, you get like two lines, one or two lines of, I don't, I don't remember if it was Megatron or uh, uh, Optimus Prime saying, we were brothers once. That, that's it, that is all the backstory you get. That is all the connection you get. But in Transformers 1, you see it. They build out their relationship they demonstrate it, they, they show it, they emphasize it, and then they tear them apart. <laughs> like, it's actually a really good movie. Like, um, and like, you, you, see, you see Cybertron 
in the days before the war starts. It's like, let's get some of that. Let's get some of that. Like, let's, let's tell a story, let's tell a Transformers story where the Transformers are the main characters. Because that's what the people are looking for. We don't need Transformers to be background, like just background extras, you know? Um, anyways, that's my thoughts. Uh, quick ranking of all of the movies. Um, last one I have is, so number eight is Age of Extinction, number seven, Last Night. Uh, number six, Transformers, the original one. Uh, number five, Dark of the Moon. Number four, Revenge of the Fallen. Uh, number three, Rise of the Beasts. Number two, Bumblebee. And of course, number one is Transformers 1. So uh, yeah, so those are my thoughts on the Transformers franchise. It's, there, it has a reputation for a reason. Not great. Um, I haven't really seen any other Michael Bay movies, so I don't know if this is like a, it's like a entire, I, I don't know if like his, like if it was just the Transformers thing that like, or if he actually can make some really good movies. Um, but his Transformers movies were not good. Um, they did get better afterwards. I mean, from Bumblebee, that was actually a, a pretty, that was actually a pretty good one. And uh, The Rise of the Beast and then Transformers 1. So yeah, like it's, they're long, they're not really that interesting and like, yeah, it, it is what it is. It's there, but you know now I now 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 I've gone through and watched all the movies. I doubt I'll really go through them all again. Um, I don't think. Uh, I think Transformers one and maybe Bumblebee is probably the only ones I'd probably rewatch at some point. But most of the stuff from the movies I barely even remember. So that's those are my thoughts on Transformers on the Transformers franchise. If you guys like the video, go ahead and hit the like button. And if you guys want to see more uh, like this, uh, go ahead and subscribe. I sometimes do other franchise reviews occasionally when I watch them. <laughs> see ya.